Hello everyone, welcome back to GIS classes. Today we will learn about the data conversion technique in GIS. Data conversion can be defined as the mechanism for converting a GIS data from one format to another. Data conversion is a standard functionality in most of the GIS packages. Basically, you can find two types of data conversion that occur in a GIS. One is the rasterization and the other one is the vectorization. So in today's class, we will learn about rasterization and vectorization. We will begin with rasterization. So, the conversion of a vector data into a raster data can be termed as rasterization. Rasterization is the simplest process among the two conversion methods. Now, what happens during the rasterization process? In the rasterization process, the polygon or the vector feature are converted to cells and each cell will fall within a value which will be equal to the attribute value of that polygon or the vector feature. Thus, the process of rasterization involves three basic steps. The first step sets up a raster with a specified cell size to cover the aerial extent of the vector data and it will assign all the cell values as zero in the initial stage. You can find the below images for that process. The second step changes the value of those cells that corresponds to point, line or polygon boundaries as in depicted in the bottom left corner of the image. Generally, a cell value is said to be 1 for a point, a line value like a 2 for a line and a polygon value like 3 for a polygon feature. The third step fills the interior of the polygon outline with the polygon value as it is shown in the bottom right corner image. During rasterization process, we need to place coordinate defined pair as well. Thus, in a rasterization process, we need to use the formula to be used to place a coordinate defined pair in a raster. To find the coordinate defined pair in a column, we use the formula x minus x minimum divided by x maximum minus x minimum into n, where the n will be the total number of columns in that raster grid. To find the coordinate defined pair for the rows, we use y minus y minimum divided by y maximum minus y minimum into m where the m will be the total number of rows in that grid cells. In connection with the calculations, the origin is normally placed in the bottom of the left corner that is your x minimum and the y minimum and the row number will also be calculated from this origin and later on it will be connected to the grid's real origin which will be the upper left corner. While doing the rasterization, it should be kept in mind that the errors are usually related to the design of the computer algorithm and the size of the raster set. Now let's look into the process of vectorization. The process of converting a raster data into a vector data is called vectorization. In vectorization, the areas containing the same cell values are converted to polygons with attribute values equivalent to pre-conversion cell values. The vectorization involves three basic steps. First one is the line thinning followed by line extraction and topological reconstruction. 
lines in the vector data model have length but no width. At the same time, the raster lines in a scanned file will occupy several pixels with width in most cases. Hence, the raster lines must be thinned ideally to one cell width for vectorization. The line thinning will be followed by line extraction. Line extraction is the process of determining where the individual line will begin and end. Topological reconstruction follows the line extraction technique. It will try to connect the extracted lines as well as to show where the digitizing error exists. The results of raster to vector conversion often shows step-like features along diagonal lines. Hence, a subsequent line smoothening operation can eliminate those artifacts from the raster data. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Post your queries in the comment box or in the Google Classroom. I wish everyone a great day ahead. Thank you.